Hi everybody, this is Lars Lemier, and welcome to another LoveVFX tutorial. This is a two-part tutorial, so make sure to watch the first part if you haven't seen it yet. In this second part I'm going to talk about the rendering and compositing of this CG forest shot with Houdini's Karma and Foundry's Nuke. Before I continue, I wanted to announce that I signed up to Patreon. That means you can now become a bronze, silver or gold supporter of LoveVFX. So if you would like to support me and the work I do for the LoveVFX channel, this is the way to show you support. I'll leave a link to my Patreon website in the description of this video. And now for the first time, gold supporters of my Patreon account can download a reduced version of the Nuke script for this tutorial that contains one watermarked frame of this sequence. The reduced downloadable version of the script is almost identical to the original script of this shot when it comes to the structure of the node tree, but it is watermarked and only one frame long. Every downloadable project that I will share on my Patreon account is only meant for educational purposes and will only be available for download for two years. All right, now let's get back to this tutorial. The lighting in this scene only consists of a point light, which I used to let the crystal shine a bit, and a dome light, which is the main light for the whole scene. I got the HDRI that I used for the dome light from Polyheaven, which is an awesome source for HDRIs, textures, and models. I wanted to achieve a very dreamy look with this lighting setup and add more depth to the scene in compositing. I think the depth haze combined with the god rays, the lens flare, and the particles, which I added in comp, create that dreamy look I was looking for. Now I'm going to talk about the Karma Render Engine and my experience with it during this project. Please take everything I'm saying about Karma with a big grain of salt, because this is the first time that I've been using Karma for a project. In my eyes, Karma has a lot of potential. At this moment, I would not use it for a job, because it's just too slow. Especially compared to V-Ray, which I have been using for over a decade now. Here is why I came to this conclusion. I managed to render one frame of this 100 frame sequence in around 15 minutes, but the quality of that sequence was way too noisy and not really acceptable. And that noisy sequence was only rendered in HD. To push the render quality to an almost acceptable result, I had to wait one hour per frame for a sequence that only gave me a bit of noise in the background. I don't know if it was just the huge amount of polygons in the scene, or the millions of small reflective leaves that made this scene so tricky for Karma. Whenever Side Effects manages to match the quality of Karma's XPU engine to the quality of its CPU engine, that is going to be an awesome moment for Houdini artists, because then I hope it will be similar to the render speed of Redshift. But I guess we all have to wait a bit more to find that out. I mainly controlled the quality of Karma's renders with the pixel samples value and the noise level. And in the image output tab, you can take a look at the AOVs that I rendered for this shot. I still have hope for the Karma render engine, but I also hope that the day Karma's XPU engine gets out of beta comes sometime this year. That would be awesome. Now let's talk about the compositing of the shot. Okay, so here we are in Nuke. Let me give you a quick overview of this comp. As always, I stored the footage and assets for this Nuke script in the footage backdrop at the top of the node tree. The other backdrops I created were for the sky, the CG forest, for fixing the flickering sun, a color correction, for lens effects, some particles, another color correction, and some noise or grain with dust grain. I created the camera for this shot by walking around in my living room, filming it with my phone, and tracking the shot in Nuke. It took me a couple of tries, but I managed to get the camera move I was looking for which was a slow walk towards this rock. Since I don't do step-by-step -step tutorials, I will only talk about a few particular sections of the script. The four main topics of this node tree that I will be talking about are the CG environment backdrop, how I reduced the noise and the rendering of this environment, the creation of the god rays, and the creation of this lens dirt. Now let's take a look at the heart of this comp, which is the CG environment backdrop. First of all, I can only recommend to pre-render the sections of your Nuke script and to disable the sections you created a pre-render for to speed up the performance of your Nuke script. Let's take a quick look at the raw rendering of the CG environment combined with the sky, 
and the combed and pre-rendered version of the CG environment combined with the sky. Here you can see that I modified quite a few areas of the CG forest. I added some depth haze to the background and some huge noise based color corrections to the trees and to the ground. I changed the general colors of the trees and displaced the edges of some of the trees in the foreground. I made this crystal glow. I gave the trees a light wrap and added some depth of field to the environment. This whole setup right here is the beauty rebuild of the environment. And I created this part of the setup to reduce a lot of noise in Karma's combined glossy reflection layer. But I will talk a bit more about this setup in a moment. On the upper right side, I created most of the mats for the environment. And even though I was the only one working on this comp, I'm a fan of labeling my work either through the label text field of a node or with a sticky node. That way it's easier for me to find certain areas I want to modify. Whenever you are creating custom mats for your comps, I highly recommend you to use stamps to create references for your mats and channel merge nodes for any of your mat operations. That way you can already see what's going on from a distance and that these areas have to do something with the creation of mats, just like you already know what's going on when you see a lot of crypto mat nodes. Okay, now let's talk about this part of the setup. Here I basically used a constant nuke smart vector, a vector distort node, with an STMAP node to stabilize small frame ranges of the shot. Then I frame blended these stabilized frames to get rid of the noise and then I used a slightly modified copy of this upper setup to invert the stabilization to distort the pixels back to their original movement. Since every one of these setups was only useful for a couple of frames, I created a bunch of them and combined their result with a switch node. I generated the smart vector with the normal pass because the normal pass does not have a lot of noise. Alright, now let's take a look at the results of my custom noise reduction setup. This is how the layer looked before my custom noise reduction. And this is how it looked after my custom noise reduction. In this case, it worked like a charm. But let me be very clear. I don't recommend you to use this technique in production if you have areas in your CG render that are being occluded. Because if you look close at the edge of this tree in the foreground, you can see a smearing effect that can even get stronger when the occlusions in your shot are faster. Of course, you could mask the area out to make it work. I just want you to be aware that this technique is not a solution for all of your CG render noise problems. I would say that this technique works good in slow shots that don't have a lot of occluding objects. Okay, now I will talk about how I created the god rays for the shot. First, I created a transform node that follows the movement of the sun in the shot with the help of a reconcile 3D node and an axis node that is positioned right where the sun is in Nuke's 3D space. Then I used that transform node, stabilized the 3D render with it, and used another transform node to offset this output into the right position. After that, I used a few more nodes to extract and recolor this area of the CG render, which I used as a source for the God Rays node. Then I inverted the transformation and stabilization from the upper area and blurred the God Rays a bit. After the pre-rendering of the God Rays, I modified the intensity of the God Rays and masked a part of the mount to make them fit into the shot. Now, finally, I will talk about how I created this lens dirt effect which is very simple. I started this effect by creating this custom lens dirt image. And then I applied it to my comp with a merge node that is set to screen, an animated multiply node to control the timing and intensity of this lens dirt, and a custom vignette mask to control the appearance of this effect. And again, if you want to take a look at a modified, watermarked, and one frame long version of the script, you can get access to it by supporting me and my channel on Patreon with a Gold Supporter subscription. Alright, that was it for the second part of this tutorial. I really hope you liked it. Thank you to my first two Patreon supporters, Hugo Guerra and Pablo Mereu. I really appreciate your support. If you want to see some more of these videos, don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any questions about my work, feel free to post them in the comments. Again, this is Lars Venier. Thanks for watching and goodbye everybody.